my name's Andrew Hoey. I'm a senior research fellow here at James Cook University. I'm also the president of the Australian Coral Reef Society. I grew up in Sydney. I always had a relationship with the ocean. Um, a lot of my friends went surfing when we were growing up, but I was more interested in what was actually below the water. So I spent a lot of time snorkeling and spearfishing. Um, but then, you know, going through school, I had a lot of pressure on where to go and what was a career. Um, my parents and other people pushed me into economics. So I actually did a Bachelor of Economics straight out of school. Certainly realised relatively quickly that that wasn't what I, where I wanted to go and where my passion was. And so I, I came back and um, looked into marine science and marine biology in particular. My research really focuses on the importance of certain groups of fishes to the, to the health of the reef, the resilience of the reef, so how quickly it can recover from disturbances. And in that light, it really focuses on those fish that feed on um, benthic macroalgae or the seaweeds. So when we, as we're seeing now in coral reefs, we're getting a lot more disturbances from um, coral bleaching, from crown of thorns, starfish outbreaks, from cyclones. The Great Barrier Reef's just been through two major bleaching events in the last two years. And the first thing that we see is, yes, all that live coral dies, but the first thing that comes in is all this algae that settles on those coral skeletons. And that's where the role of the herbivorous fish is really important because they feed on that, that algae and keep it down. If they don't, it grows up into these large macroalgal forests. So if, if you think about your backyard, if you're mowing your lawn all the time, you can maintain it in this really cropped, nice green lawn. If you neglect it for a year or two, suddenly you'll have a forest in your backyard and, and you'll need a different set of tools. So the fish or the, the lawnmower that you could use to keep the, the grass down, suddenly when you get a bush or bush encroachment in there, you need a different set of tools. And the same on the reef, we, we actually switch between which fish are important in keeping it grazed down. But when we get those forests, it's really hard to get it back and it's a different suite of fish that we need to get them. So on, on the Great Barrier Reef at the moment, the most impacted reefs are those closer to human population. So those inshore reefs um, close to the coast. They're getting a lot of sedimentation, a lot of nutrients coming from agriculture, coastal development and just the way we're using those habitats or reef areas and we're getting a lot more shipping in there so resuspension of sediments and that's having a real impact on the, the communities on coral reefs so what we're seeing is we've got a lot more macroalgae or those tall seaweed forests on those inshore reefs and as we move out further across the shelf we get more live coral cover and they get to a climax on those outer shelf reefs. In relation to my research with the herbivorous fish, what you see is we've got lower numbers of herbivores on those inshore reefs, lower diversity. So we don't have that mix of species, the ones that are grazing, the ones that are removing the seaweed once it gets established. And so those coastal reefs tend to be a lot more vulnerable and we've got this relationship between the uh, abundance of macroalgae and the abundance of those herbivorous fish. Um, so moving forwards, what, what I'd like to see on the Barrier Reef, um, and a lot of reefs across the world actually, is that we get, get some regulatory protection for herbivorous fish. Um, on the Barrier Reef, we're lucky in a way that they're not really targeted by fishes at the moment. There's some spear fishes uh, that will take them, and particularly on those inshore vulnerable reefs. So if we can get some protection in place, that'd be great. Um, but many places I've worked across the world as well, we've seen where those herbivorous fish are taken out of the system, and the reefs get these continual bumps from cyclones or bleaching or disease where that coral cover goes down, they never actually recover. And it, it's the herbivorous fish that are the key to getting those, those reefs on that trajectory upwards. 